All right, it's week one yes. of uh, Beyond the Weekend, and we're, we're tossing out the next five, six weeks, just these little 10, 15-minute dialogues of uh, just kind of interact a little bit about this series that we're in, Uncommon Joy. And so, Tyler, you're with us today. And uh, what's, the, what's kind of the heart behind this whole series of Uncommon yeah. Joy? Yeah, well... I'm I'm excited about this series because it's focusing in on Paul's letter that he writes that is known as Philippians. It's a letter to the believers in the city of Philippi. And you look at it and one of the common threads throughout this entire letter is this expression of joy, of gratitude. And you could read it at one level and go, oh, that's nice. Paul's really happy about these friends that he has, you know, these friends who have kind of shown generosity, shown kindness. But then when you step back and look at the broader scope of what is actually going on while he's writing it, it kind of makes you scratch your head. Because I think, you know, when it comes to joy, most of us, we have a picture of, well, in order for me to experience joy, it needs to happen in this type of framework. And what I love about this study is we're going to be looking at the fact that Paul's actually writing this joyful expression in prison. And so often, I think all of us can be guilty, myself included. I don't know if you can relate, but... Not at all. Not at all. No. But uh, I think a lot of times we make joy circumstantial. So... I can be full of joy as long as everything's perfect at home. I can be full of joy as long as I'm on track for my next bonus or advancement in work. I can be full of joy if I'm getting straight A's in school. But if it doesn't hit this, then I don't really have a lot of reasons to be joyful. And I feel like even the way that Paul approaches that, it kind of challenges us as Jesus followers to step back and go, okay, where am I actually finding joy from, right? Because I think what we're going to learn over the next number of weeks is you can find joy in unexpected places and a type of joy that we would call uncommon. Sure. And I mean, I think it's interesting too, when you look at kind of the whole of scripture, uh, at least at least my quick search, joy, 333 mentions in the Bible. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a significant, it's a significant theme right uh it's it's brought into in a couple places where it's like actually this this mark right here this mark of joy is uh is a is a is a direct result of of this relationship that you're choosing to have with jesus right. and i mean how how do how have you you know how do you how do you see that just this 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 huge theme and this just this core character how in the next five weeks yeah. is this going to be developed in our lives? Yeah, well, I think, you know, joy for somebody who actually knows Jesus, again, not just knowing data about Jesus, but knowing Jesus, joy should not be optional. Now, that doesn't mean that you're you're always happy about what's going on. You know, you're not always like loving the challenge, right? Uh, but there's always something to be joyful about. Like right now I'm sipping on a cup of coffee. And that's bringing joy. That's bringing joy to my heart, you know? Uh, and it does so multiple times a day. Uh, but, you know, when I talk about joy not being optional, Paul, in another letter in Galatians, he talks about the fruit of the Spirit or the characteristics of what it looks like when the Spirit resides in our lives. And he goes on down this list, and you, you know some of these evidence or what, what he calls fruit, right? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, nine of them, nine characteristics, but they're not all fragmented out. We can't pick and choose. It'd be awesome. Like It'd be if, awesome. Like, like if we could just get nine people in a room yeah. and just draw them out of a hat, I yeah. feel like I feel like I could take care of one of them. Yeah, yeah, and I think I think that's sometimes our approach. Well, today's not my day for joy. I'm just going to be, uh, you know, patient, right? But that's not at all what what he's getting at. And if we think about the dynamic of what he's saying, when the Spirit, when the Holy Spirit resides in our lives, one of the characteristics, one of the evidences of the spirit residing within us is going to be joy. Now, if we look at like life, media, the news, the person who lives across the cul-de-sac from you, um, 
joy is often one of those things that, uh, not today, not today. But for the life of a follower of Jesus, no, it is today, even in spite of the challenge, even in spite of the tension at work, even in spite of the diagnosis, even in spite of writing this letter from prison. Yeah, no, that's good. And I, I think one of the things, uh, uh, when I think about joy and I think about kind of interacting some of the thoughts in Scripture, I, there's kind of this contrast between joyless and then joyful. Mm-hmm. And it's like there's a, you know, the, it's, there's, there's something that happens when it's joyful because there's a, it, it's an overflow. I mean, what, what have you found in your life? I mean, because sometimes I might be able to get my joy tank. At least I'm okay. Yeah. But really, I think we're instructed to be joyful. Yeah. And it's like, it's not just joy for me. Right. And like, I'm good and my little circle's good. But there's really a tension of living a joyful life. Yeah. What, what have you seen kind of in living in that kind of an abundance of joy? Yeah. Well, I think that's when it, it becomes real uh, in the expression of it to others, right? It's, it's the overflow of that. And so often we make our walk with Jesus about my personal relationship. Right. So it's just me. As long as I kind of have that joyful feeling, you know, we used to sing this song. I got the joy, 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 joy. What? Down in my heart. Down Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down yeah, in my yeah, heart. Yeah. So, but when we talk about biblical joy, it doesn't just remain hidden and it's not wrapped up. It's not tethered to what happened yesterday or hopefully what happens tomorrow. It It's tethered to this abiding presence right? And we all know, or many of us at least, uh, we should know that our relationship with Jesus, it doesn't just stay in the private sectors of our lives. It should become public. It should become aware. It should become known. And so even going back to what we were mentioning earlier, the evidence, uh, it's, it's not enough just to kind of have this little area of joy that once a week we visit for an hour at church. No, we're called to live joy full lives. And so that's really both what we received, but then how it begins to work its way out and how we live, you know? That's good. So we, uh, we've put together a little, uh, yeah, little resource guide here for the next, uh, next five weeks. And, uh, in there, there's some encouragement through scripture. There's, uh, there's opportunities. There's a couple of key memory verses in there, just some some thoughts of scripture to put to memory. What uh, we're asking people to take this journey with us for the next five weeks. We're asking them to grab one of these. We're asking them to maybe have coffee with somebody, read through the book, catch these these little video podcasts that we're doing. What what encouragement do you want to give to people as we step into this first week? Yeah, I think uh, the greatest expressions of joy don't happen in isolation. Even Paul writing this letter. He's writing it to a group, a collective segment of people who are some some people that he wants to remind them of truth. He wants to express that gratitude. And so really, I, I would encourage all of us, don't just get this book and like sit on your couch alone in isolation and go, well, it's just me and Jesus. I'm going to have this little joyful moment right here. You can do that. But the amount of joy that you experience when you're with other people, you're hearing their expression of joy. It's interesting how when I hear an expression of joy from you, Jeff, it creates, it does something inside of me. It helps me to get my eyes off of my circumstances and back onto, wow, yeah, you know, Jeff, Jeff had a great day or Jeff experienced that, right? The sharing, the collective pursuit of knowing Jesus more together in community. I think that it helps expedite that process of living out in uncommon joy in our lives. Sure. And one of the things you and I talked about was throughout this series, we want to offer people an opportunity to engage and interact with us. And so we've we've set up just a simple email for people to send in questions, questions at life-center.org. But just what... What do you want to encourage people to, you know, what do you want them to send us? Yeah, I think, you know, as as people are journeying through the content, as they're 
hopefully reading through this letter. I mean, it's a short little letter that Paul writes, but there's a lot packed in there. Um, as they come across questions uh, in the stuff that they're reading, as they come across maybe thoughts or you know places where they're really trying to process, okay, I know what this is saying, but how does this actually practically get lived out right now in my life, street level, where I'm at, how do, how do I put this into play? I think those are some of the things that that we want to help people process, you know. So I would highly encourage people to send those questions in uh, because we want this to be not just a monologue. We want this to be a conversation. Yeah. So it's the same reason why we create these group guides is not just for a monologue, but an opportunity for you to get in a group and dialogue. We want to keep the conversation going because I really do think if if we got a bunch of people who are following Jesus and the way that they live that relationship out, it's overflowing with not just joy, but an uncommon joy. In other words, they have neighbors, coworkers, friends at school who are looking at you going, man, I know that you're walking through this, but why are you so joyful for them to be able to allow that type of joy to trickle out, to kind of overflow in our city? I think people are going to begin to ask questions Maybe there's something to this Jesus thing. Yeah, that yeah, no, that's good. So thanks for helping us kick this first week off. Yeah. We've got four more different people that are going to be showing up yeah, here excited. to just kind of interact in their life and how the scripture is making application to them. So looking forward to the five weeks. Yeah. And uh, thanks for being here. Absolutely. Absolutely.